What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from the Real Fan Review. Today with me, I got my brother B. What's up, everybody? Yeah, we got my man in the chair, Al. How's it going, everybody? Yes, sir. It's going to be three of us tonight. Maybe Sanj. We'll see if Sanj jumps on. Sanj, you know, maybe parenting again. So, <laughs> oh. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dale. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah man let's let's talk about a couple things this week man we got we were talking about doing last week and hoping that they made a part two well that got green lit so we'll talk about that we'll talk about sandman and the lizard looking like they're going to be in part of spider-man no way home that means sinister six people uh we got the movies for november and then we're going to talk about eternals that comes out this week for us thursday for us real fans, Thursday. For everybody else, Friday. <laughs> so let's get right into it, man. I mean, Al, I know you really like the movie. We just saw it a couple of weeks ago now. I think it's two weeks ago now, or is it a week yeah. ago? Yeah, I think it was about two, three, two, yeah, two weeks ago. It feels like a week ago. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, we, we saw Dune, and we all were pretty left off impressed with the movie. I know you liked it a lot compared to the original, and you like this version a lot also. Yeah. What's, what's your thoughts on hearing that it did get greenlit and that they look like they have a, uh, it looks like it's two years away from us? Yeah, no, I think they said 2023. Um, yeah. No, I was excited about it because especially given how deep they're getting into the lore and how much they're telling of the story. You know, I wanted to see, especially since I haven't read any of the books, more to the story. Um, the only thing that I forgot who it was, one of the other reviewers scared me because they were they were making the joke that sometimes the theaters will say that the sequel has been greenlit so that people can go to the theater, uh-huh. not feeling like there's nothing you know to go for, and right. then after they get as much sales, they'll, they'll that's when they'll actually decide. So. They kind of scared me with that, but I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping this really got greenlit sincerely, and we can mm-hmm. see the the continued story of Paul Atreides. Yeah, listen, man, when they said that they greenlit it, and then they said they'll come out in two years, I'm like, that's pretty fast for something that just got greenlit. So I wonder if they were just <laughs> keeping it, if they were just keeping it away from us, not knowing, trying to keep us all worried that it wouldn't bake a number two when it, yeah. it looks fantastic. You don't spend that yeah, kind man. of money and not make a part two and finish that deal off. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Brandon, besides them coming up with this movie within the next two years, they also interviewed the director saying that uh, I think it's uh, Villanueva or mm-hmm. Denise Villanueva. Yeah. Uh, looks like he wants to make a trilogy out of this. So, Jesus, three yeah. of these. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm not against it. If, if it if it's visually stunning, if the story works, if the characterization is there, then fuck it. Why not? You know, I just think. You know, with the, this kind of story, I, I think that it runs into the the Spider Man problem. You know, in in case of like their actors looking older than they're supposed to be, kind of a thing. You know, yeah. with Timothy Chalamet is you know twenty five playing a tw- like a fifteen year old or fifteen, yeah. So like, or is he twenty five? I think he's twenty five. I don't remember. But like, you know, he's playing a fifteen year old uh, in this movie, and like, he does look. 15 ish, you know, he's very small yes. framed, you know, <laughs> but like my worry is, you know, two years from now, I mean, they're going to start probably filming in the next year or so, but like, you know, if this was to be a trilogy, we're looking five years down the road, Timothy Chalamet is going to be 30 years old. And, <laughs> you know, is he going to still be playing the 15 year old, the 19 year old, you know, when the guy is 30. So like, it comes down in Zendaya. She, I mean, she's graced by the you know age. She, like she looks, she looks like she's forever a teenager. You know, as she's now trying. I, I mean, I, it looks like it seems like she's trying to break out of that teenage role by taking on more mature roles. Absolutely, like she yeah. did with the, that one Netflix movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you know, like she is currently uh, also a fifteen-year-old in this movie, right? So like. Mm-hmm. For her to be, I think her and Timothy Chalamet are the same age. She's going to be thirty. So if this is a trilogy and they don't, they're not aging their characters like they're not in the book. Because I think in the book they only age a couple years at most, right? Mm-hmm. From what I so, understand, yeah. So like, if they're going to be maybe eighteen and they're thirty, you know, like, I just it runs into the the Spider Man thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they do like they did Matrix, um, and they just filmed the two movies back to back. 
you know, they could do it that way. They just get it over sure. with since you already know you're doing a trilogy. And I mean, yeah. there are more Dune books. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know the politics and what the scheme is of the second novel, you know, mm -hmm. that is about their kids. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if they do the two Dune movies and then the third movie is that after movie with them older and their kids are, you know, the the leads, you know, that could be something, too. Yeah, man. I'm listen. I'm just glad that they're continuing the story because, of course, the more franchises that we have or the different stories we get to see, it might make someone else come up with a different concept or a different sci-fi angle to make a movie based off of that. So I just want to see more of this type of like filming, this type of movie, this type of story. And I just I'm glad to see that they're going to green that they greenlit it, you know greenlit the movie for them to make it within the next few years, and Al gets to see his part two. <laughs> <laughs> it also makes me wonder how they're going to be evaluating a success going forward with everything going on, because yeah. this movie you know by all measures you know before the pandemic, I don't know if it would have been considered as much of a success to like you said so quickly greenlight um, a sequel. So, you know, it may be part of this whole new redefinition of, you know, a successful movie in this um, weird, you know, crazy market that we have in terms of people coming out, not coming out. Are you going to go to streaming or not? And how, to, how much the streaming factor into consider a movie a success? Yeah, I heard that's actually one of the deals that the director made. He's like, if you put this to streaming, I'm not making it. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, they had all the issues with HBO yeah. Max, so. Yeah. yeah, man. So this one's straight to theaters, fellas. Straight yeah, to theaters. <laughs> <laughs> Only theaters. No does, HBO Max on this one. Does this technically break the HBO Max curse? I think so. Yeah, it has to, Brandon. <laughs> it has to. This one has to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, guys. Dune, Dune 2, Greenlit, we'll be seeing it with two years, and you'll begin our review in two years. So <laughs> <laughs> absolutely looking forward to it. Once we see a trailer or get more information about it, we'll definitely bring it up on the podcast for you guys to see and hear what we think about it. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about that is, uh, I forgot which, uh, which magazine company it is, but they did a, they do all the, I think it's Entertainment Weekly, I think it is, where they do pretty much, when a movie's about to come out, they'll do a big spread, they'll put a cover out there of these news movies that are coming out. And the recent magazine cover was Spider-Man No Way Home. They had two different covers. They had like a comic booky cover and another one with another like life picture or CGI picture that looks a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. And on the cover and in the magazine apparently are hints and nods to the Sandman from the Tobey Maguire universe of, of Spider-Man 3 fame, which is not so good, uh, but also the Lizard from Sp The Amazing Spider-Man Part 1. Oh, so right. that's we're, we're getting Doc Ock, we're getting the Green Goblin, we're getting the Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2, looks like we're getting Sandman, Lizard, we saw Venom basically enter the MCU, Mm -hmm. Brandon, talk to me, man. Is that our Sinister <laughs> Six? Is that our Sinister Six with No Way Home? I mean, they they have so many possibilities. Like, I, I don't know if Willem Dafoe is confirmed yet. Like, I obviously we saw, we heard the laugh, we saw the pumpkin bomb, but we didn't right. get much else. I mean, I, I feel like he has to be confirmed. Uh, you know, in terms of Sinister Six, like, obviously I'm excited for the concept of it. And the fact that, like, they've established who these villains are in previous Spider-Man movies kind of gives this movie the leeway to not have to do that. Right. You know, maybe a line here and there, definitely a crossover from Toby and Andrew, you know. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, you know, I, I think even even if they didn't go Venom, like, right, like, what if, like, Venom was the end credit scene? Um, even if that happened... You still have Paul Giamatti's Rhino, you know, in some universe, there could be Mysterio, mm. you know, so yeah. like the, the Vulture. opportunity, I mean, Vulture's still a person in this yeah. universe, so he's still around. So, he's, you know, I, I think the opportunity there is that they could literally bring in anybody from these movies and have a Sinister Six someone, because I know that they said that. There's a Sinister Six movie in development at Sony, but like, 
you know, the, the likelihood of that coming out, considering um, Black Cat and the Silver Sable movie got scrapped, the Spider-Woman movie got scrapped, you know, XYZ Spider-Man type movie got scrapped. So I, I don't think the likelihood of it happening is going to happen. So I think this movie is going to be our final look at a Sinister Six to, apply, to actually happen in the Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Now, I, I remember one of our complaints from a while back about Spider-Man 3 th- with Tobey Maguire was too many characters were in that yeah. one. We got, the, we got the, you know, Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman. We also got Venom and Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. And it was all it was it was a little bit over the place. And of, of course, it's known not to be one of the best Spider-Man movies out there. It's probably one of the weakest ones, if anything, out of the, the all the Spider-Man movies we've seen is is there a little fear now coming into the fact that, that we may get six or seven, eight characters of villains in this movie, or if they're playing villains, who knows what they're doing. But it feels like with a movie that's maybe about two and a half hours long, we're going to get like 15 minutes of each villain or maybe them together. Any thoughts on that with the villains? Yeah. You know, that's the, you know, that's gotta be a fear of that. They watered down the movie so much, trying to give so many different characters, I guess, either equal billing or equal time on screen, right. that you potentially could make the every character so weak, it becomes a, why did you even bother? Um, so what I'm hoping is that they're not the focus of the movie. The focus of the movie is, is still going to focus around Doctor Strange and, and Tobey Maguire, and, uh, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland's ca- Spider-Man. Right. trying to get everybody to forget that he was Spider-Man and he's flashing through these universes. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering if, you know, they're hyping up, you know, all these characters are going to be in the movie and they're using that to hype everybody up and get everybody to come in, but they're not going to be in the movie. Like the movie is not going to be around them, you know? So mm-hmm. we're going to get a flash of, Spider-Man fighting Sandman, fighting Electro, fighting all these, you know, these these different villains. Mm-hmm. But that it's going to be like a as he's bouncing through the universes. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, and then they bring it back to the main story being about him getting everybody to forget and restoring his life in his universe. Kind of like what Endgame did with uh, the time heist. You know, right. each of them went into a different time, but it didn't take over the movie. So if mm-hmm. they can do something like that, that's how I see it can work where you're not, so you know, weakening the movie. Because then otherwise it's like, you know, oh, come mm-hmm. on, Green Goblin's not that weak. He wouldn't have been beat that quick. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, yeah. these are all powerful villains of Spider-Man. You can't make them be somebody that he defeats each one in like 10 minutes because, you know, otherwise you'd have a four hour movie. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then it, it makes me worry too because we still have the quote unquote hope of having Tobey Maguire and also Andrew Garfield in the movie too. So it's like, how do you make time for all of these different things and Doctor Strange as well? So it's just like, it seems like a lot, but listen, if anybody can pull it off, it's Marvel. They know we what we want, they know that I mean, we don't like yeah, overstuffness. I, I mean, like, think about like, I, I think it's totally doable. You know, I, I think the problem with Spider-Man 3 was that the story itself was just so convoluted that it didn't lend very well into having the three villains, three villains, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, even, like, if you think about the way Spider-Man 3 ended, <laughs> Sandman basically killed, like, 17 people, and Tobey Maguire was like, <laughs> you were just trying to be a better dad. Adios. Like, like, <laughs> no. Send him to prison. Like, you know, so, like, I think, like, the story was all over the place. But then I think about, like, Infinity War and Endgame. And there was 30-something characters in this movie who all shared the screen and did some X, Y, and Z. You know, and like you said, I I have my faith in Marvel. I think because most of these villains have already been established in other Spider-Man movies, it just makes you say, well, you know what? Before I see this movie, let me watch Spider-Man 1, 2, 3 – and the amazing Spider-Man one and two, and I'll be caught up. So it kind of puts the responsibility on us to refresh yeah. our memories. And then you do the spend, homework. <laughs> you do the homework before you watch it. And then like it, it leaves the movie that two and a half hour movie for us to, you know, have those villains maybe come in, make a plan, do a thing, you know, 
kick Spider-Man's ass and then two other Spider-Man come in and help, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's doable. I think, I think that as long as the story is clear, concise, and clean, it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping so, man. I mean, I really do want the best to end this year off December 17th, 16th for us real fans, uh, December 17th, and just just get blown away for two and a half hours. Just like, I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. It's the Sinister yeah. Six. It's three Spider-Men and Doctor Strange. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait, man. But yeah, as soon as we hear more, I know there's supposed to be a second trailer. I think it's supposed to come out I thought it was going to come out today. That's why I wanted to do the podcast on Monday. But the trailer's going to come out this morning because the Eternals comes out this week. But it's looking like it's going to be either two weeks from now or sometime in this month because, you know, the movie comes out within a month from now as well. So they, they're going to put out a second trailer that's going to make everybody go, yeah, I got to buy my tickets right now. Yeah. <laughs> I got to buy my tickets right now. Which, uh, by the way, I got uh, Al and Brandon's and Sanjay's ticket for Ghostbusters. You're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. So I saw the announcement come through. Oh, oh yeah, I got the notification. <laughs> you guys should never give me access to your A-list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Now, listen, the next thing we're going to talk about real quick is these movies that are coming out for this month. Since it is November 1st. The movies that are coming out this month, let's tell you guys and tell me which three you guys are really interested in and why you're interested in those more than the others there. We got Eternals coming out this week, Ghostbusters Afterlife in a couple of weeks there. We got Red Notice with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and also uh, our guy Free Guy. We got King Richard, Home Sweet Home Alone, which is, I guess, Home Sweet Alabama Home Alone, maybe? No, I think Uh, it's a reboot of Home Alone. But what's with the Home Sweet? (laughs) I don't know, Ken. Home Sweet Home Alone. Yeah. Hmm. We got Encanto, which is the uh, Colombian animated movie that I'm sure I'm going to take my wife to. There you go. Uh, we got the house of what these kids say, Gucci. And uh, Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. But not only that, man, as well as coming out this this month is the Book of Boba Fett for Disney Plus and also Marvel's Hawkeye as well. Uh, Book of Boba Fett just had a trailer come out today that was pretty interesting. Nothing too crazy. If you haven't seen it, just go look it up online. It's going to be out there for you. So we got a couple movies, a couple of shows to watch and stuff over this month. So definitely a lot for us to talk about on the podcast. But uh, Al, is there anything that you're looking forward to more than anything else? Or is there a couple of things you want to make sure you see this month? Well, obviously, you know, Eternals, um, Ghostbusters, Afterlife. And then I'm t- after that, it's probably a close tie between um, Red Notice and um, and Resident Evil. Right. You know, you, you have The Rock and Ryan Reynolds, um, two of the biggest draws in movies right now. Um, and then Gal Gadot, you just add to the mix and... I just want to see what you do, what they can do with those three people on the movie screen at the same time. Yeah. You know, all of them, they have a great sense of humor, uh, great t- comedic timing. Mm-hmm. So um, I just want to see what, what, what this movie, I have no idea what it's about. I don't even want to yeah. know. I already know who's in it and that it's on <laughs> Netflix. So that's as yeah. much of it as I want to know. I, you see, I want to see Red Notice with the wifey just so I can hear her go, oh my God, he's so corny with his mm-hmm. one-liners. Dude, the rock kills us sometimes, man. With uh, those, okay. the puns. Oh, man. oh dude. Oh, yeah. I guess you're gonna have a hard time. I'm like, oh God, rock. <laughs> He's. Got, I think he puts that in his contract that he has to have those He's, lines. The little corny lines. He. I. You know what's funny? Brandon told me to watch uh, the Jungle Cruise on Disney, and I actually got a chance to watch it. And he has a whole bunch of those. He's in a, he's in a broken car. He goes, I guess it's exhausted i was like oh god <laughs> oh god did he just do an exhaust joke uh, <laughs> so anyway brandon man by the way thank you brandon jungle cruise was pretty cool though i did enjoy that right yeah. as, as, as terrible as it was marketed yeah. it was pretty good <laughs> yeah, i i have to thank actually my two kids for pressing a bunch of fucking buttons on the remote for buying it <laughs> On Verizon for me for twenty one dollars. That's why I watched it. <laughs> so, no one, Elijah, thank you for buying <laughs> without my permission. Uh, Brandon, what are you looking forward to in November? There, 
Uh, obviously, I'm looking forward to Eternals and Ghostbusters. You know, the more I see that Ghostbusters commercial uh, trailer, uh-huh. the like, more excited I get for it. Just like, I don't know, there's something about that commercial. I'm just like, all right, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I think the third movie, I- I'm thinking, you know, either Encanto or Red Notice, um, just because, you know, I love my Pixar, so... Mm-hmm. Seeing Encanto would be pretty cool, especially um, you guys should get the chance. It's it's just really lame, but on Netflix there is a movie called Vivo, and okay. it's about a monkey, and Lin Manuel is the monkey. It's a Cuban monkey, uh-huh, and Lin Manuel okay. is the monkey, and it's like watching like animated Hamilton, <laughs> but not. <laughs> and it was it's funny because it's really cute. It's a cute movie, yeah. and like. I watched it, and it, it's, a, it's a cool appreciation for culture, Hispanic culture especially. And so when I saw Encanto, the, the trailer for it, just the other day actually, I was like, oh, like, you know, a, a cool thing for, for you know, this month. Uh-huh. I, I Jesus, wish it Brandon. came out last month. We have to work on your accent, Brandon. <laughs> Holy Jesus. <laughs> Encanto. Jesus. Encanto, man. <laughs> Don't put it out there like people know. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> uh, listen, for my, my three... Two Chetis Bailar. <laughs> oh, Bailar? Jesus. You know what? Shut his mic out. <laughs> Bailar. God damn, that's, I can't even go to the next topic. Uh, <laughs> it's the pollo con habichuelas. Oh God! I sound like the only like white dude ordering at a taco truck. <laughs> Sounds horrible, but I'm hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, my movies for November. I'm telling you guys now. I am nervous about Eternals as much as I do trust Marvel and I do want to see all these characters I've never seen before. And we're about to talk about it in a second about our hopes and thoughts on Eternals, but. Al just told me before we got on the podcast to record that the Metacritic score or the the, the Rotten Tomato score is at 56%. 59%. It's 59%. like borderline. From what I understand, it's going back and forth. It's yeah. fresh. It's rotten. It's fresh. It's rotten. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, I heard it's a really like convoluted story about time and time passing and all this stuff. And, you know, part of me is like, you know, you don't want to get stuck with the same old, same old. You want something different. You don't want them to repeat the Marvel quote unquote formula for every movie where the bad guy comes in the middle and then the, the, the hero wins at the end. You don't want that story. You want something different. So I'm looking forward to something different. I just don't know how different this is going to be, but yeah. we're, uh, we'll see. So uh, for me, it's going to be Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I do want to see Encanto, Brandon. <laughs> I do want to see Encanto. Oh, stop, Brandon. Um, King Richard it, with Will Smith as Serena and uh, Venus, oh my God. Serena and, and Venus. Venus. And Venus Williams, you know, the sisters, their dad would love to to see how that 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 relationship was formed as far as like the way he made them who they are today kind of yeah. thing. And we'd love to be interested in seeing that. Um, but I can't lie also, man. I mean, I did see the the preview for the book of Boba Fett this morning and <clears throat> kind of interested just because I know how well they did the Mandalorian. So I'm con- yeah. I'm just hoping that those people who did the Mandalorian are doing this book of Boba Fett. And that's supposed to come out towards the end of, I think, December. Yeah. No, end of November, then the December. Really? I, I thought it was December. Mm. So then it's probably Marvel Hawkeye that comes out at this yeah, month. Hawkeye is November, yeah. Yeah, so then I'm not, not looking forward to Boba Fett this month. <laughs> <laughs> but Hawkeye for sure, man. I, I definitely yeah. love those little stories. And to see the the random character's life outside side of the big MCU is kind of cool, you know, so I'm looking forward to those things there, you know, and listen, I know if Sanj were on, he'd probably tell us the same thing, man, that Ghostbusters movies, every time he sees the commercial or the trailer in the movie theater, he loses his, he loses his <laughs> shit every time, so he, I know he's looking forward to Ghostbusters there, um, I think he's said something about House of Gucci, so I gotta ask him about that, but House of Gucci does look good too, I don't want to discredit that, because it looks like one of those, like, Emmy winning movies, or Grammy winning, not Grammy, uh, what is Oscar? One of the Oscar-winning movies. So maybe we'll see about the House of Gucci's bringing there. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, man, movies for November. A lot of lot of big movies, man. A lot of stuff we'll talk about during uh, this month. So we'll definitely be back next week with the uh, Eternals review for that, yeah. and um, Ghostbusters Afterlife as well. So those are the big ones we'll definitely talk about this month. But uh, let's get into the last topic for tonight, fellas. We're gonna give people a Eternals prep. How I don't know. Because I don't know who these people are, Brandon. <laughs> We're talking with these weird names like Cersei and Fastos. And Can Mach- someone explain to me why they actually are referencing Superman in the movie? Yeah, what's DC characters, right? Yeah, yeah. what's up yeah. with that? So I, I, jab, I, that's, jab, 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 jab. A little part of me is nervous because I guess there is no real history of myself. You know, as much as the comic books I used to read when I was in high school, I never read The Eternals. Until they said they were going to make this movie, I never heard who these things, who these people were. So, you know, you would find little things here and there. There's a couple of people who review comic books on YouTube as well, and they'll review these stories from The Eternals. And from what I got of it, Eternals are these people that were sent to Earth before Earth became as populated and, and, and where we are now in civilization, right? And they were protecting the people from these other eternal-like people called deviant. Hey, guys, a little technical difficulties there, so we do apologize for that, but we're back up on the mics here. So, like I was saying, man, I don't know how far that did you guys class catch me at was with what? The word deviants. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you know, these deviants are the so quote unquote bad guys that these Eternals are sent to Earth to stop them from bothering us humans. It's so weird. I I don't even get the concept as I'm saying it. It's just ridiculous. So I'm <laughs> I'm hoping it comes out better than how I said it. <laughs> <laughs> stop bothering the humans. Yeah, don't you <laughs> leave them alone. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, Brandon, I'm assuming you know more about these characters, or is this um, not your forte, these things? I, I do know a bit about them. You know, they did have a comic line that included Thor um, a while back. So the weird thing about Eternals is they were made by Jack Kirby kind of in response to Jack Kirby making new gods in DC. <laughs> uh-huh. So... Basically, Jack Kirby was just like, well, let me make the same thing in both comics. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're essentially the new gods, because if you think about new gods, their whole thing is like the whole war on apocalypse and all X, Y, and Z, and basically facing titans very close to deviants. So like he basically made the same offshoot of like heroes just for two different comics. Um, and they essentially do the same thing, like they fly – They shoot shit from their eyes, they hit really hard, and they're immortal, just like, you know, Darkseed is immortal and and Superman, because he's a new god, right? So, it's it's basically, he did the same thing for both comic books, and how they've worked in in Marvel has always been just like as a cosmic team, just like Guardians, but their whole thing is they're always against the Deviants. They fought Thanos once, I think they came together with Adam Warlock once. Oh, wow. Um, which I think is a nice little nod into what's going on. But other than that, like, most of their story is shrouded in, like, not mystery, but just shrouded in, like, they're not around a lot. You know, some of the Eternals end up, you know, being Avengers every now and then. Like, even people they've fraternized with. So, like, in this movie, you're going to meet the Black Knight. That's yeah. Kit Harrington's character. The Black Knight was often an Avenger. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's interesting to have those nods in there. It's just... It's one of those things where it's either going to be a hit or a miss. And then if it is yeah. like a hit, you're wondering how it's going to fit into everything else. Mm-hmm. Like like the Eternals, they have a weird thing. And I, I'm, I, I think we've seen it already in the trailers, but they have like like a hive mind sense of, sense of things. So oh, like wow. when all of them are together – they can form through their mental consciousness like a new being that's like the like yeah what it's like <laughs> it's like forming a brain voltron like <laughs> like it's Sick. really weird 
It's very weird, but that's right. what they do, and they're gonna do it in this movie. And I'm, I'm warning you in advance, it's oh. gonna happen. <laughs> oh, is that where, like, in one of the clips, that you see, um, like three of them floating, or or a few of them floating, and there's like a a, a an energy between them? I think so. I, I think in one scene in the movie, they're in like a spaceship, and you can see like a red thing in the middle of them that looks yeah. like a body. Yeah, okay. that's what they're supposed to make when they're all together through brain consciousness. <laughs> I will walk out the theater to do that shit. Oh, they're going to do that shit. They're going to do it. They're oh, going to do it at least Lord. twice. <laughs> oh, man. No way. I just, I, I, under, I understand, like, the, the cosmic part of where the MCU is trying to go in this phase. Right. I just, I just wonder if it's too risky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got you, man. Al, what's your thoughts on, on these Eternals, man? What you're looking forward to seeing, or what's your thoughts on these things? Uh, what I'm looking for, and, and uh, pr- the trailer kind of alludes that they're at least going to try to answer it, or at least you know that they're aware we want to know about this, is where the hell have they been? If they've been there since the beginning of like our time, so to speak, and their job was to protect us, Kind of like what Kit Harrington's character says. It's like, where were you guys, you know, during all of the major events and Thanos? So, you know, Thanos. obviously. Thanos. Thanos. So, <laughs> you know, at least they're aware. They know what the fans and the audience is going to want to hear and what they're going to want us, what we want to be told and explained to us. Um, I just hope the answer makes sense because to what you, what Brandon was saying, like their whole creation was to protect us and fight against the deviants. But Thanos was a deviant. So why mm-hmm. didn't you get involved when Thanos was doing this? So, you know, I hope they explain that or explain that maybe Thanos wasn't a deviant. Which That's would, what I'm, I'm waiting for. Which from the comics. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. waiting for that one word answer. From yeah. like, I feel like Angelina Jolie is going to be the one to say, she's like, he wasn't a deviant. Like yeah. that's what I'm waiting because for. Because is it like he and her are cousins or something like that in the comics? I think uh, um, Angelina Jolie as character Athena. Athena. And, yeah. Yeah. So and then you know the fact if you, when you listen to these names, are they going to be the supposed reason why these characters exist in like human lore, you right. know, and so forth? Yeah. And, and then Star Fox is going to be in this movie. Who what? is? What? Oh, not not that star, not the barrel roll star fox. Just, <laughs> I'm like, star when did the Froggy get in on this? <laughs> Pippi, Pippi, Pippi's gonna be flying to a barrel roll. <laughs> um, um, no, in the in the comics, Thanos has a brother. His name is Star Fox. Oh my lord! I, oh, that's I, that human guy with the, gr- the blonde hair or something. Yeah. Okay. And he's Thanos' brother. Oh God! I this is gonna get crazy. See, I, I, I'm I'm hoping they don't do this. They How got a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, <laughs> they don't look a, they don't look nothing alike. Yeah, <laughs> got some explaining. They, got some explaining. Too too convoluted with all this stuff. If they do what they do in the comic book, I just need it to be a good movie with some action. But a lot yeah. of I keep hearing it's a thinking man Marvel movie. I'm like, oh come on, people just said that for Dune. <laughs> it's a thinking man sci-fi movie. Now we're gonna have a thinking man's Marvel hero oh, movie. Man. Just entertain me, man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to take. Think. <laughs> yeah, take me away from school and, and work and stress, yeah, please. I just want to see people shoot laser beams at each other <laughs> and fly around. Like bang bang, that's it. That's all I want to see. Bang bang. <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't want to have to remember some side comment from two minutes into the movie. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, a part of me, again, this is me thinking as someone who watches a lot of movies and stuff like that. When I see big name characters like Angelina Jolie, um, uh, what's the what's uh, Thelma, the, Hayek. Thelma, Thelma Hayek Thelma. in the movie? Salma Hayek, thank you, in the yeah. movie. When I see characters like that in the movie, I know those are actors that don't want to be in superhero movies. So it's like a one of, I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like if you're going to do a one of movie, then it has to be amazing. But like, what's the purpose of this movie? You know what I mean? Like, is there going to be an Eternals part two? Is are these just characters that are going to eventually go in? Are these characters going to die in this movie? Like, I don't even if they're Eternals. How do they die? You know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of stuff I'm still interested in. But I think a part of me, what I do want to see in this movie is 
hints towards the future. You know what I mean? If these guys are so major and so big and so like, you know, from the history of Marvel, I want them to show me what's coming. You know, whether that's a Galactus, Mutants or something like that, because that's that's the only real reason I could see them making this. I don't even understand why they chose to make an Eternals movie when they could have done Black Panther Part Two or they could have done, you know, an Iron Man four somehow or some way or Captain or America. Fantastic Four. Fantastic yeah. Four, perfect, yeah, but they did Eternals, and I'm like, why? And they rushed this one <laughs> ahead, right? Like, I don't think yeah. this was originally slated to be made, and then they rushed ahead of those other ones, so. Yeah, so it's, it's, do, it's a little do, bit. Do you guys remember that this was originally supposed to be Inhumans? Yes. <laughs> yeah. With Black Bolt yeah. and everybody? Black Bolt, yeah. yep. Even, yeah, like, I, I would honestly, to be honest, like, I haven't seen this movie, I have high hopes for it, but... You know, we said this, like, the Eternals group is, like, even in the comics, they're kind of like a one-off group, as it is. Like, there's only a couple Eternals that actually show up in the Avengers later on, you know, regardless of Black Knight. He's not an Eternal. But, like, I kind of would have preferred to have an Inhumans movie because, like, Black Bolt is, like, a a signature part of a lot that happens in the MCU. Like, Mm -hmm. I would rather see Black Bolt and Reed Richards and Xavier, you know, and Tony Stark in a room discussing mm-hmm. what the fuck to do with the Hulk. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's just kind of it's just, it's very interesting, man. I mean, like, uh, any concerns or worries for this movie? Yeah, just that, like you said, for them to have actors that I can't see coming back for a sequel or let alone maybe even a third one. Um that this is not going to be treated as a filler type movie. Like mm-hmm. this movie is just be, is being made. Yes. We're throwing some big names in there, but it's main purpose is to explain something like something else that's coming along in right. other movies. Cause then it's like, all right, you just made me, you know, you spent all this money and everything on a movie. That's really objective is to set up another movie. Mm-hmm. And not even its own sequel, like uh, literally another movie. So, like, it's which would to me take away from the story of this movie. So mm-hmm. now you know you take me out of the events of this movie because you really set me up mentally to think of the other movie that's coming. So, I mean, I don't like when one movie's main goal is to like take you out of the main the actual movie you're watching. Like, right. You know, so I yeah, hope that's I, not what's happening here. Uh, that's how you felt with Black Widow. I remember that you were saying yeah. that with Black Widow. So yeah, because you, yeah. you're watching all those events, and really, it's setting you up for Yelena and the, <laughs> the you know, what's his name show, Hawkeye. Hawkeye, right? Yeah, gotcha, Brandon. Any kind of like. I guess put it out there, hopes that you see in this movie or something you definitely want to see. Like I said, I want to see something like, you know, something towards Galactus or Silver Surfer or the Mutants or something like that. Is there something that you're hoping to see in this movie since you know a little bit more about them specifically? Um, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure because of who they are. Like, my thinking is, like, I don't think there's going to be a sequel. I think mm-hmm. that half of them are going to die in this movie okay. and the surviving few of them are the ones that we've seen with the Avengers in the comics. Um, like I forget their names, but, um, uh, Gemma Chan, her character, Cersei, Cersei. She's often with the Avengers, you know, black Knight is often with the Avengers. So maybe like black, Kn- I mean, maybe at the end of the movie, black Knight finds his sword, you know, oh, and he okay. becomes black Knight. Maybe there is a cue of some, maybe even a cut to Adam Warlock. You know, I know that's not going to happen. He was just casted, but like, just like clues to set up other movies. I mean, I don't want to get excited off of other movies from this movie, but I just don't know where this is going to go. Cause like, even like cosmic wise, like the Eternals have nothing to do with Galactus. So like, I couldn't even see how they would, bridge that i mean marvel's changed things in the in the past mm-hmm. but like you know whether they end up back in space or not you know maybe the only nod i can see is maybe a silver surfer nod which would be great all right 
Ah, man, any hopes for you? Anything that you think you want to see or would like to see? Because uh, I don't know if a lot of people know there's going to be two end credit scenes in this movie that everybody's telling is, is pretty amazing. So two end credits. Anything you want to see in the movie or in those end credits? Well, I want to see where what they're setting up for this phase. Because like, we still don't know. who. Like We're all assuming Kang is the big bad, but he got introduced in, in Loki, right? And Loki, he's supposed mm-hmm. to be the big character of Quantumania. Um, so if that's the case, then who does et- what does Eternal set up? And like you said, yeah, they're making a big point of stressing these two end credit scenes. So mm-hmm. what are they setting up? Like, you know, where are they taking us? Is it going to be an Adam Warlock, like Brandon said? Um, even if it's just a reference to him, like maybe they don't show him because the guy just got mm-hmm. cast and maybe it's too soon to bring him in. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just like, and, and it just gets me to where I am with the whole MCU. I don't know where they're going. You know, right. it's like, <laughs> it's like before we knew from the from the first movie that they were going to do something with these stones because they show Thanos at the end of the movie. Where are we going with this whole phase? I have no idea, kid. So, right. I'm hoping to get some direction from this movie and see where they're going. All right, man. The last question, man. We'll go, guys, around the table here. And then uh, we'll finish off the podcast and get ready to see this movie for real <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this week. Now, with this being an MCU movie, is there a character in the MCU that you hope to see in this movie? Someone that we've already known and met that will come across the screen or maybe they'll mention them or something. But I mean, of course, they're going to mention the Avengers here and there. But is there someone that we're going to see in the movie that we didn't expect to see? Al, what's your thoughts, man? Anybody in particular you would want to see on there? Honestly, only because uh, the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same uh, thing. The Hulk. I would <laughs> want to see him only because I'm hearing rumors that there's possible talks of a, um, wh- wh- what was it, World of World War? World War Hulk. Hulk. Oh, kid. From the little bit I saw of that, I would love to see that on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but only because I don't like of the characters. He's the one I think didn't get the proper justice throughout the right. whole arc of the Infinity Saga. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see them redeem him, bring him back into the fold, and give Bruce Banner and the Hulk uh, some kind of justice and just do in this next phase. All right. And Brandon, how about you, man? Anybody you would want to see that's currently in the MCU in this movie? I mean, I actually had the same thought. I thought I was going to see Banner in this movie at some point. Banner? Okay. Yeah. You know, for me, I I think I want to see uh, Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi, excuse me. So (laughs) I would like to see Shang-Chi and to see if maybe that his rings or the rings that he got from his dad are connected to whatever this thing is. This the rings are either cluing in or bringing in. Uh, I'm hoping we get some kind of resolution to that or some kind of hint towards where is that? What was that that, that, that beacon coming from or going to? One or the mm-hmm. other, coming from or going to. Where's that beacon going? So I would love to see a little bit more information on that. So I'm hoping we do see a little Shang Chi in there, just to kind of keep this, you know, phase going. Because like I, I do agree with Al. You know, I think in the in the first few phases there, they were always hinting to the next character. Then when we got to Avengers, they hinted into Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet. Now that we got past the Infinity Gauntlet, we really don't know where we're going, especially with the shows. The most hint we ever got was the Loki show with Kang. And mm-hmm. after that, we kind of get this feeling of the uh, the Dark Avengers, we you know, with the with agent, U.S. agent now. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> what's the lady's name from uh, Seinfeld? Oh. Uh, 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 Lee Dreyfus. Dreyfus, yeah, we got her character still getting characters here and there that we haven't really seen in a little bit there. So just curious to see where this place is going, man. It seems like it's going in a lot of different directions. Keeps us interested, keeps us in the kind of like kind of want to figure out what's going on and what's happening. So hopefully this answers some of that there. So, man, listen, I can't wait for Thursday night. We got our tickets. We're ready to go. I hope you guys listening and watching are ready to go for this movie. It's a Marvel movie. You know, we always get excited for these movies. Those Thursday night shows where everyone who's a fan goes and gets amped up and ready to watch a movie. So I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Again, be safe out there. Wear your mask or get your COVID shot. You know, (laughs) make sure that you guys are ready to see this movie in the theaters. All right. There's no Disney Plus on this one. No Disney Plus. 
45 day window though so you can wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man but listen that's gonna be us for tonight we are the real fan review so if you're listening to us on the podcast app please hit that plus symbol on the top right there that'll give us or give you access to us so that way we come up on your playlist every week if you're watching on youtube hit the subscribe button that way that every time we put out a podcast on youtube you can be right there in the know to be seeing what we're doing and what we're talking about there if you're watching on the youtube leave a comment below let us know what you think of all those stuff all the november movies uh your thoughts on eternals what you're hoping to see and want to see in that movie and then that is it that's us from long island new york so we got my brother B. Adios, everybody. We got our man in the chair, Al. Have a good night, everybody. Yes, and myself, I'm saying thank you guys for listening, watching. We appreciate you. Hit the subscribe button again, and we'll catch you next week on the next podcast, Eternals Review, non-spoiler, and then a huge spoiler right afterwards, <laughs> all right? Definitely talk to you guys next week. Until next time.